you know, that there is a way out of this. And I think the arts are, are, are crucial, right, to, to, to keeping us feeling that, you know, we, we do have hope. <laughs> To Arts Engines. I am your host, Aaron Dworkin, and with us as today's guest, we have Bennett Rink, who is the executive director of the Alvin Ailey Dance Foundation. Welcome, Bennett. Thank you, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's great to have you here. Uh, and so with all of our guests, I let our uh, audience kind of look up their full bios and all of that, um, but thought I would just kind of start with your role at Ailey. Um, you know, a lot of times people are, are kind of like, you know, what does a president or executive director, you know, kind of do at an organization? And could you just kind of share with us kind of what are those typical things that occupy the largest amounts of your time as an arts leader, specifically at Ailey? Sure. Uh, so we're a modern dance uh, company, school, um, educational entity. Um, I'm the executive director. And then my uh, counterpart is Robert Battle, who's the artistic director. And the two of us are co-leaders of the organization. Robert sets the artistic vision for the company and all of our programs. Um, he chooses the dancers, he chooses the repertory, so everything artistic uh, really emanates from his vision. And then my role is really as a, as a manager to make sure that the organization is run in such a way that we can fulfill his vision and that we can really realize the artistic and educational mission of the organization. Uh, so I manage the budget, I uh, set the strategy, I work carefully with the board of trustees. Um, I lead, you know, uh, a very fine group of arts administrators in marketing and development and finance and operations. Um, and really the goal is to make sure that the organization is, is fiscally sound, um, that we're able to be aspirational, and that ultimately we're serving the art. Awesome, awesome. So it's, in, in, it's interesting in terms of kind of the dynamics there, and I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about how you know there are uh, a lot of organizations that are that are smaller that don't have necessarily the depth of of staffing of resources that that might be available at, at Ailey, and yet struggle with kind of here's this artistic vision we have here's what we need to do right, um, and uh, but then how do we actually implement it and trying to figure out when you've got kind of a smaller team how much time do we invest in our artistry and how much time do we invest in our administration or our management or our fundraising? How do you, you know, it seems like this constant battle for a lot of organizations. How do you balance it? And, and do you have suggestions, especially for those who might have, you know, a, a smaller team with which to work or a smaller um, uh, kind of totality of resources? Right. Well, I mean, I think uh, you're right. Of course, it's, it's a definitely uh, a challenge for smaller organizations. Um, uh, and Ailey's, you know, we have a 60 year, 62 year history now, and, and we've, you know, reached a degree, a degree of stability uh, that does allow us to, um, you know, to not have to constantly juggle as a smaller organization might do. Um, but in terms of the balance, um, I think first and foremost, it's really essential to have a a forward-thinking, vibrant, artistic vision. That that you know has to be first and foremost, and then it's how you communicate that to your board, to your donors, to your stakeholders. Um, and if you if you lead with that, and you have people's excitement and enthusiasm, then I think you have a much better you know position just from the starting gate. Um, and then, quite honestly, uh, I can't overemphasize <laughs> enough how important it is. Uh, to be a good steward of the budget, to really uh, make sure that your, your, your budget is well managed, um, and that you're constantly um, looking for funding, uh, really. I mean, my job, I came up through development, and, and I, I still am the chief fundraiser for the organization, along with Robert. That's really, I think, an important concept for people to understand, that you're, you know, you're the one who is setting the, 
but the vision and the strategy, and it's really your role to fund it. That's, that's so true, so true. And I see a lot of organizations sometimes where it you know, seems like either they're not as effective as they could be with how they're articulating their mission and or they just don't invest enough in, in fundraising. Um, so I have two quick questions on that. One quick kind of just in terms of for you and your experiences and do you have kind of a recommended range that you think is ideal for those out there of the amount of time that you have to dedicate in and around in some way, shape or form fundraising resource development? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, if, if you're a really small organization and you, you don't, you, some, a lot of places can, can't employ a full-time fundraiser, right? So um, in that case, I would say, you know, you could imagine 60 to 70% of your time being spent really focused on, on fundraising. Um, and for me, it's a little seasonal. Um, you know, it depends on where we are in the year. Um, for instance, if, if we're in performance mode leading up to a gala with, you know, a series of performances, then, um, you know, easily 50, 60% of my time is spent, you know, engaging with donors. Because you really need to maximize those opportunities when you're, when you have a show or when you have an exhibit or whatever the program is to get the donors, you know, to somehow experience it. And that's the optimal time to really build those relationships. Yeah, awesome. So when you actually go the kind of second piece of this, the articulation, so especially now with the crisis going on, and when you think about even outside of that with issues relating to healthcare or affordable housing uh, or the environment, how do you articulate this role of the arts um, to people, especially so that when they're looking and saying we have limited resources and, you know, and, and we have, you know, these other issues coming at us, why is yours of, of value? Why is dance of, of value? Why are any of the arts disciplines of value? How do you articulate that? And, and that's, a, that's a, a key question right now, certainly. Um, and I think it's important to acknowledge that there are very pressing human uh, needs. We're in a, in a public health crisis, right? Um, but at the same time, I don't think we as arts leaders should apologize or be defensive about the role of the arts. Because as people right now are confined to their homes, uh, you can just see this tremendous need for people to connect somehow to their, 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 their you know, their sense of, creativity, their sense of, you know, how to find hope, right? How to feel, you know, that there is a way out of this. And I think the arts are, are, are crucial, right? To, to, to keeping us feeling that, you know, we, we do have hope, that we do have, um, that we can experience things that frankly just sort of take our minds off of, you know, the constant stream of bad news right now. Um, and that can uplift, right? At, at, at times when we're really in need of that. Yeah, absolutely. So is there, as you kind of think back, if you were articulating um, even to a, to, a, to a funder or some, you know, external uh, resource, as you look back on either just this, this last year or even in the last couple of months, is there something in your work that you feel has really stood out that you're like, you know, here is an example of the impact that that dance can have. Here's an example of the impact that Ailey can and, and has had that, that really stands out to you. Yeah, and I think I would, I would because we're in the, in the midst of this unprecedented uh, crisis, I would, I would sort of focus in on what we're doing right now. Um, so as soon as it became evident that live performances and, and classes and, and all of our, you know, for us, you know, basically that's, that's, how we, that's how we connect, that's how we engage people. But that was all being shut down. We immediately pivoted and created an online strategy. Uh, we're calling it Ailey All Access. And it's streaming full length performances, which we've never done before. Uh, it's creating online classes that are, this is all free too. You know, online classes that people can take um, uh, through our Ailey Extension program. Uh, our amazing dancers are creating this original content on uh, pushing it out through Instagram and other social channels. 
Um, and all of our other educational programs have created online tools so that those students can remain connected. And we're seeing an amazing response. So I think um, that shows that there's still this tremendous desire and, and, and need for, for what we do, uh, but we're just figuring out how to deliver it in a new way. Gotcha. And so and here's the interesting thing, and it seems like people now are beginning to talk a little more about this, but which is once we're past at least the immediacy of the crisis, and no one knows, it seems, when that will be, um, but at some point we will be past it in, in large part. Do you see a return to kind of normal, or do you think there will be a new normal for you and for Ailey? And, and what types of things do you think you may have actually learned from this and that you might say, oh, here's actually certain things we might keep in perpetuity even past. Is there anything like that arisen yet? I mean, I think it's still pretty early on to, to know, you know, um, anything for certain, but um, I, I do think for those of us in the live performing arts world, uh, it will be a very slow return um, to what we would think of as normal. And, and eventually there will be a new normal. Um, I do believe um, completely that eventually, once we're past this, people will want to return to the theater. They'll want to go into a studio and take a class. They'll want to go to a museum. So I think that will, will return. But at the same time, I think all of us, we're gonna to have to create, we're gonna to have to really accept our digital strategy um, so that we have that not, you know, in. In a crisis when we have to sort of scramble and do it but that it's an ongoing sort of parallel uh, stream that that is creating content and you know right now we're all doing it for free but we also have to figure out how to monetize it too because you know ultimately you need it to generate revenue yeah absolutely absolutely so how about you personally um how has the transition in these covid days uh kind of happened for you uh What's kind of your, your typical day nowadays? And what would you say has kind of been the biggest challenge for you in this kind of new environment? Sure. Um, well, like everybody, you know, we're all, we're all working out of our homes. Um, we, we do a daily check-in uh, with sort of a core group of about 20 people from all different departments. Um, and we talk about you know what's happening we talk about what we're all doing it's it's sort of book combination business but also just sort of like we like to feel that we're still connected uh, and then each department meets on their own um we're constantly uh, sharing information um so you know i think what are we in five weeks into this right now um I'm, and i think we've we've done a really good job and not really missing a beat um What's been hard for me and, and for other leaders within Italy and, and outside is to, um, things are changing so rapidly, right? And, and you're making scenarios, you're creating plans, and then you suddenly have to abandon it and, you know, go with something else. So it's, it's sort of, you know, it's like there's been nothing like this. Someone said to me, you know, on a call earlier, they're like, well, now I really know what crisis management is about. And it really wasn't what I learned at Harvard. <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The unpredictable is just yeah. overwhelming sometimes. You know, it's interesting you're talking about a lot of people I've been talking to talk about that communication piece. A lot of leaders talk about how one of the core things is this regular communication with their core teams, um, that that somehow has become like this vital lifeline almost. Yeah, and, and to the degree that you can um, do it for the whole organization too, I think is also important. You know, regular sort of email updates to everybody. Uh, Robert Badlow and I did a Zoom call with the entire staff. Uh, we had Judith Jamison, our, you know, illustrious artistic director emerita on the calls talking to people. So the things that you can do to, to give people, um, again, you know, throughout the entire organization, a sense that we're all in this together um, is really important. Awesome. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time, uh, but Bennett Rink, you are truly one of the great arts engines in our field. Thank you so much for joining us today. That means a lot coming from you, Aaron. Thank you very much.